uh, over the weekend, things were not good. Uh, there were multiple shootings over the weekend. Three people were shot and killed within a 12-hour span. The article from MyNorthwest.com, Seattle sees violent start to All-Star Week. Two of those shootings happened in Soto, which is the area around the stadiums, uh, specifically the area south of the stadiums. We know that one of them, um, someone was found dead in a home. The other one, according to Fox 13, a man was found dead with gunshot wounds, and it happened outside of a business in an area along 4th Avenue that I would imagine some people are going to park for the All-Star Game, that there are businesses, again, trying to make money after years and years of uh, really low foot traffic, at least the kind of foot traffic that you want as a business. And so this is obviously not what we wanted to see, but to me it's sort of this confluence of obvious things going on. First of all, it's the summer. In the summer, naturally, we have an increase in homicides during a period where we're already seeing record homicides. Again, we'll get into the latest uh, statistics momentarily. But then also you have a lot of people gathering down there for the All-Star Game. You just had the city come in and do some sweeps. And so we know that some of the homeless encampments, which have a higher likelihood of shootings happening in or around them, have been kind of uh, scattered to the wind a little bit. And then, of course, you have the ongoing uh, drug epidemic and the mental health crisis. So we still don't know a lot about the three homicides that happened in the city in a span of 12 hours. We don't know if they were random, uh, particularly the one that happened on the street outside the business. And so we're waiting to find information, but three fatal shootings in that area in the course of 12 hours is obviously not good and not the kind of news that you want launching into the big game tomorrow while everybody's down there. The city is absolutely full of crap absolutely full of it. And to a, a level of gaslighting that has reached beyond the point of insulting to our intelligence. So the mayor's office had a press conference on Friday, which I appreciated the fact that they're like, hey, we'll have the chief here and we'll answer your questions. They had the deputy mayors there about what our preparations are, what the police presence is going to look like, et cetera. Uh, good they did it. Glad they did it. But there were some things that came out of it that I'm just like, you got to be kidding me. So we talked last week about how there have been sweeps in, in the shadow of T-Mobile Park, sweeps of RV, you know, derelict RVs, sweeps of homeless encampments which I think is a good thing. I think it's a good thing. I think that there should always be sweeps. I don't think that we should be a city where it is comfortable to set up a tent somewhere on public property or private property for that matter, and the city just leaves you be. I think every sweep is an opportunity to convince those people not to lead, lead that lifestyle, whatever is leading them to it, because I think poverty is, is, is low on the list of things that lead people to homelessness, substance abuse, much higher on the list. But I think sweeps are good, but Yes, it's frustrating that we're seeing more of this effort to clean up downtown just because there's a baseball game. So anyway, one of the deputy mayors comes out at this press conference on Friday, and he goes, he had the audacity to claim that those sweeps we were covering last week have nothing to do with the, the baseball game. The sweeps that are happening just blocks from T-Mobile Park, oh no, it has nothing to do with the baseball game. We totally would have been doing that anyway. Here he is. You know, we do through our unified care team uh, an objective matrix of which removals um, take place. So there's been no artificial ramp up of those in the area around the stadiums uh, in the lead up to the All Star game. I think uh, we all know that Soto and surrounding areas have are disproportionately, they have a lot of uh, encampments and RVs. And so they um, have, since the mayor took office, had kind of a steady uh, stream of removals that are necessary. Uh, but there's been no artificial ramp up. No artificial ramp up. Interesting. Yeah, totally believe that. I totally buy that those sweeps aren't because of the baseball game and because you want homeless people out of sight, out of mind. That's absurd. And just, you should be owning it. I think that that comes with trying to make excuses for, you know, not wanting to, to anger far left activists or whatever it is about sweeps. You know, because it's easier for people to get angry about sweeps if you're just doing it for baseball fans. But if it's just part of what you've been doing all along, then maybe people will be less angry about it. Just own it. Be like, yeah, we don't want homeless camps within blocks of the, the baseball stadium where there's going to be uh, families who are coming, a lot of them from out of state, to enjoy it. Yeah, we're not going to apologize for it. But of course they can't do that because they don't have the political will to do it. Also, we talked on the show last week about these concrete blocks. The giant, they call them eco blocks, which I think is stupid. They're just concrete blocks. And... They were put by the dozens 
down in place of tents and RVs. So as soon as tents were swept in these areas by the stadium, as soon as RVs moved out of the way, dozens of these blocks were dropped so that they couldn't come back and just replace their tent immediately. And then under city rules, basically, if there's a tent that goes down, they have to issue a 72 hour notice. And that would put them past the All-Star game. So um, I think dropping the blocks is great, but last week there was a question about, well, who did it? Who, who put them there? Because last year, around this time, business owners in Ballard were at their wits end. They were tired of the homeless people setting up tents wherever they saw fit, scaring away business. And so business owners had rented, you know, with their own money, those blocks to put down in places to keep the homeless away. And the city uh, was not livid over it, but the city gave them a tisk tisk, like, hey, you shouldn't do that. That's not the solution. And threatened to fine these business owners. So when we started to see these concrete blocks be put down immediately after the city was sweeping encampments, we thought, is the city really going to use those same blocks that they chastised business owners for using last year? Well, it turns out that these blocks were actually paid for by some businesses in the area and put down by businesses in the area. But now the city is saying, as opposed to what they said last summer, the city's like, oh, well, you know, we're not going to uh, go move those right now. Oh, we don't have time to move those or we don't have resources to move those. In truth, the city's glad the businesses did it, right? It saves the city a headache. So the city is now willing to look the other way because it helps them with their baseball game. But they weren't willing to look the other way when businesses were dropping those blocks so that they could make a living so that they wouldn't face financial ruin. So when businesses were doing it in Ballard less than a year ago, so that they wouldn't have to close up shop, the city's tisk tisk tisk. But when businesses are doing it now, ahead of a baseball game, the city's like, oh, oh, we can't do anything about it right now, no big deal. It's ridiculous, it's absurd.